Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain some of the terms used in clinical audit. The audit is a system by which we compare our care of patients to some guidelines or a standard and evaluate whether we are meeting the standard or falling below it. The clinical audit also ensures that there will be an improvement in the area being audited. The word system in the first sentence defines the series of actions or steps taken for the audit. It must be understood that the steps taken to do an audit are well defined and include a scientific methodology. For example, literature search, methodology, statistical analysis, results and discussion. Standards are established as a fact by an authority. Guidelines are developed based on review of the literature and are evidence based. They are time bound and so must be reviewed periodically by the authorities. Improvement is a goal for all audits as audits are done to improve the quality of care. We have used the term process and outcomes as an indicator or a measure for service improvement. Here the word process means the steps taken by a patient once they enter the health facility until they leave the facility. Outcomes in audit imply the results of the treatment. There is a difference between standards and guidelines and this will be explained further. Guidelines are developed after all the evidence on a topic has been gathered and evaluated systematically. These guidelines will then guide the doctors and nurses in the medical practices in specific circumstances. Let us review the definition of standards as a measure against which an existing structure or process can be compared. For example, a standard of care in the labor room may be set as only less than 3% for patients with postpartum infection. This means that it is acceptable if the department admits patient over a whole year and the number of patients who have infections is less than 3%. This would mean that this is acceptable as an occurrence due to patient disease and not due to the care being provided. An example of guidelines which is provided by the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence says that women with uncomplicated pregnancies should usually be offered induction of labor between 41 and 42 weeks to avoid the risks of prolonged pregnancy. The exact timing should consider the woman's preference and local circumstances. Let's move on to find the definition of audit in a dictionary. We see that audit is a general word which means an official examination and verification of accounts. When we use this word with clinical i.e. clinical audit, it implies audits taking place in hospitals and clinics. The definition of the process indicator means the steps that occur while a patient enters a health facility for care until they leave the facility. Let us take for an example of the term process used here in the audit. Suppose a patient arrives at a health facility in an ambulance. The patient is taken from the ambulance and moved into the emergency area. Inside the emergency room, the patient is assisted by nurses and doctors. The patient is then admitted to the hospital and treatment is started. 
This treatment may be in the form of blood transfusion or other medications. The patient may even require an operation. The investigations may also include x-rays or scans. The patient receives the treatment and then leaves the hospital. So here the process has been defined and any stage of this process can be identified as an area of audit for improving patient care. For example, the patient may take too long to be shifted from the ambulance to the emergency area or the doctors may not attend the patient in the emergency room promptly. So after this we can move on to understand what is the meaning of outcome. Patient outcomes include the functional status of the patient, for example a patient becomes healthy and improves or may still be sick. Patient satisfaction is another measure of outcome as it is essential for patient care in the health facility. Process and outcome indicators are the two indicators used to identify the area for improvement. These two indicators are considered very important and the auditor must determine which kind of indicator they wish to select for their audit. Is it going to be the process through which the patient receives health treatment in the facility or will it be the outcome after being present in the health facility and receiving care? Next, we will understand the meaning of the term risk management. At times and events may occur within the institution or the facility and the patient or a staff member may be harmed or has the potential to be harmed. This is a patient safety incident. It is the responsibility of the institution to identify what happened how it happened, why it happened and whether there are learning points for the service, how these learning points can be incorporated into the system so that the risk is removed. The process of risk management is done through a structured format. The deliberation involves many people from the facility to pa participate in this activity and conduct an objective assessment. Clinical governance is an overarching term that is used to describe many kinds of activities that take place in the health facility. The audit is a part of clinical governance and there are six other components which are also called pillars. These pillars include clinical effectiveness, which means it is the responsibility of every member of the facility to ensure the correct treatment is provided to the patient for the best outcome. Another pillar is that of risk management for identifying any threats to patient or staff or the facility. Clinical governance also ensures public involvement in setting up the services and care systems so that the facility is easily approachable by the community. We have already discussed the term audit and what it means. Staff management means making sure the right person is selected for the job. This means the person must be fully qualified and experienced and be credentialed for the procedure they can perform. Education is the ongoing training to ensure staff is well educated according to the job requirement. Information is a continuing medical education program for staff to ensure that all new things are known to the staff. An example of this is the massive educational 
campaign following the COVID pandemic. With this, we come to the end of the video. If you like this video, then subscribe, share, like and comment. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.